Hi everybody, my name is Bohush, speaking for Videoblocks. I'm here to show you how easy it is to find amazing content on Videoblocks.com. Then we're going to walk through getting Videoblocks Media into iMovie, so you can easily add lots of production value and professionalism to your next project. Are you ready? Let's get started. Here's what the Videoblocks website looks like. Now, sharp-eyed observers might notice that I'm using a PC for this portion of the tutorial, but it all works exactly the same way on your Mac. The Videoblocks website is actually a powerful search engine and media browser. So let's type in our username and password. Now that we've logged in, we can start searching and previewing media. You can use the search tool right up here, or by hitting the Browse button, you can kind of... Uh, see what's new and what's exciting and check out categories and this is a nice way to get started if you've never looked at video blocks before. Now there's a lot of royalty free content here and your subscription gives you access to all of it. There are no hidden fees later on. And what else is cool is that you can access your account from wherever you are. So you don't have to carry around bulky media, uh, nor do you have to pay for clips, you know, like in a DVD collection. Uh, that you won't ultimately use. You just download what you need and you can use it any way you want. Your video block subscription unlocks unlimited access to everything you find on the site. We'll search for some of the same clips that I used for this little project I made just using downloaded assets from video blocks. Okay, ha ha ha. So that's our little joke clip. Let's see what we've got in here. Looks like we have a kind of a newsroom set. We've got an animated graphic. The title came from the uh, editing program. Then we have, oh, we have some sort of flare wipe. We have slow motion footage of the TV falling and a lower third. And then a title again from our nonlinear editor. So we've got a couple clips to find. Let's get started by finding this uh, virtual newsroom set. Fortunately, searching through all this content is really easy. Every page on videoblocks.com has the search tool right here in the upper right. So we just enter in, let's say, newsroom. And notice there's a pull down where we can choose either search absolutely everything on the site or just video, just audio. So let's stick with just video and hit that little magnifying glass. And here are the newsroom files. Now what's cool is that this page is actually a media browser. So to get a preview of the clip, just hover your mouse over it and a little window will open up and actually show you an animated preview. And this is a great way to look through stuff very, very quickly. Okay, it looks like, uh, yeah, this is the one we used. So let's just uh, left click on it to get more details and to actually download. So here's what it looks like. You get a preview again that you can play back scrub through if you need to see something specific. You also get some details and even Facebook stuff. If you want to like it on Facebook or comment on it, uh, this is very useful as the site grows. You're going to get uh, peer reviews of each of these clips. So the red button is how you download and that's all you have to do is just click on it and you're downloading. Note underneath it you can see the actual specs of the clip. Now this is in HD it's at 1920 by 1080. It's 29.97 frames per second. It's in QuickTime format, .mov format. And all you have to do to download it is just click download. And I'll put it in a folder on my desktop, which I've entitled Video Blocks Downloads. So while that's downloading, let's, uh, let's look for the next footage that we need for our little demo clip, which was the uh, dropping slow motion television set. Now we can search for it using the search tool at the top of the page. But if you look at the left, there's this column of categories. And that's another way you can search. You can actually see a, a wider selection of similarly themed footage all at the same time. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the categories. We see there's a slow motion category. If we click on it, we see that breaking and smashing is one of the categories. Let's click on that and take a look. Aha. Okay, lots of stuff here. And as we scroll down, we can see there's a, uh, there's a slow motion old TV, uh, a little different television being done in by a sledgehammer. Let's uh, look at this clip right here. That's a different model of TV. Works well, though. 
Uh, let's see. Ah, there it is. Slow motion dropping and breaking. Front view. This is exactly the one we used. So let's, uh, let's click on this and take a look. Here's the page for this video clip. It gives you all the details we got before. But notice one important difference. This is available to download in two different formats. You can download it in MP4 or you can download it in MOV. Now the image size is the same. They're both full HD 1920 by 1080 video clips. The difference really is the file size. The MP4 is slightly more compressed, and so it gets you a file size of only 28 megs, whereas the full MOV is 236 megs. Uh, so actually there's a big difference between those two. Visually, the MP4 is more compressed, so it's really more designed for work that's going to go out on the web, or uh, maybe you need to download a lot of clips so you can kind of experiment and preview. MP4 is great for that. If you're doing something a little more high profile, a little more high end, and you need the photo JPEG codec, well, the .mov is there as well. Just uh, be prepared to wait a little longer to download it, and of course, you'll need uh, a little extra space. Also, not all nonlinear editors play nice with MP4 or MOV. You'll just need to choose the format that's right for you. For our purposes, the MP4 is just great. So we're going to download it, and I want you to remember that it is full HD, 1920 by 1080. That's important to keep in mind if you're working at a different project size. Uh, we'll have an example of this a little bit later. So let's just click to download. While that's loading, it's time to go looking for sound and some music. Now, uh, we can use the search tool. We can use uh, audio has its own category browser. Let's, uh, let's just see what we get if we put in news. And we'll search just audio and click the magnifying glass. News and hover. And again, you get those great little previews. Oh, okay, that sounds so newsy. Uh, so let's click on that. That's the one we're going to use. Here's the page with more details about the audio clip we were just previewing. Uh, you can hear it again if you need to. And you're presented with two choices for downloading. You can download an MP3, or you can download a WAV file. Now, it's the same caveat as before. The MP3 is compressed to uh, give you a tiny file size, while the WAV is the full, uncompressed audio clip. In my work, usually I'll use the MP3 if I'm previewing stuff, especially for a client, and then um, I'll go back and grab the wave because they're not that huge. You know, they're not going to eat up your life through all this downloading. Uh, for right now, let's just grab the MP3 and we'll download it to my machine. While our video blocks are downloading, let's, uh, let's open up iMovie. Now, the first thing we want to do is go into iMovie's preferences. Just go into iMovie, prefs and make sure that Show Advanced Tools is turned on. We're going to be doing some cool things as part of this demo that require the advanced tools, so make sure they're turned on. Now let's create our project. Go to File, New Project, and here's where we name the project. I'll just call it VB Demo. And then notice you can make a couple choices with the frame rate. Uh, 30 FPS is typical American TV, 25 FPS, typical PAL TV, and then 24 FPS, this is what a lot of uh, DSLRs shoot. So uh, you might want to take that into account when you create your project. I'm just going to go with 24 FPS and create. So this is our blank project. Uh, let's import some video so we can get started. Go to File, Import Movies. And, uh, oh, there's my download folder with all the uh, video blocks I've been downloading. So you can just uh, shift select to get all of the videos. Now notice at the bottom, there's an important chooser down here for optimizing video. There's uh, the size that iMovie calls large or full original size. I recommend you choose full original size. Uh, there's not a lot of benefit to scaling your video blocks before you even get them into your project. So just click import. And after a few minutes, your video footage will be available in your project. Okay, here are our clips lined up in our project, and you can edit these like any other clip you've ever edited. 
you know, here's the uh, falling TV clip. If you just click and drag, you can just take a smaller portion of that clip and then just drag it up into your project. Ah, now this is interesting. Mismatched frame rates. So what this is telling us is that the video was shot at 30 frames a second, but the project is set to be 24 frames a second. It's asking, what do we want to do? Well, to make life easier, let's just hit change, and then it'll make our project 30 frames per second from now on. Okay, there's our, there's our sub clip. So let's drag some more things in there. Let's grab a little piece of this uh, this fire footage, drag it in. And this uh, newsroom would be good background. Uh, we can just grab the whole clip, it's pretty short. Okay, and there's our little mini project. We downloaded some music from videoblocks.com, so let's look at adding that to our iMovie project. Now keep in mind, iMovie looks for music in your iTunes library. So I'm just looking at the uh, folder where I downloaded my video block stuff. Uh, control click on the track that you want, and then go open with iTunes. The uh, You'll hear the track play, and that's adding it to your iTunes library, which we can see. Let's get this window out of the way. Click on this little musical note in the lower right corner. There's our iTunes library, and there's the music track. It's uh, the only thing I've got in there. Drag it into an empty space, and you can see it represented by this green square, and you can even see how much time it's taking in the uh, timeline of your project. So there you go. Very simple to add music and position it where you want. I'm going to remove it uh, just to make room for a cool overlay effect I want to show you. As you look around on videoblocks.com, you're going to see that certain clips are marked with uh, alpha transparency. Now, iMovie doesn't use alpha channel. Uh, like in this case with this fire, in a, in a different piece of software, this fire would just be overlaid on top of other stuff. You wouldn't see any of that black background. Of course, you can use any of those alpha channel clips as just a regular clip. You know, in the case of our fire, that would look great behind a logo or as part of another part of a scene or something like that. But if you want overlays, Videoblocks has you covered. Uh, Videoblocks has a large collection of graphics with a green screen. Like, here's this animation of a film reel that's spinning, and it's got a green background. Let's uh, drag this into our project. We'll, uh, let's select the whole thing. And when you click and drag it, drag it over the clip you want it to share space with. And when you release the mouse button, you're going to get that advanced tools menu. All you have to do now is click green screen. It's just one click. And there's your overlay. And it animates. It's, it's real moving video. And as you can see, it can even bridge and edit. Uh, so this is a very, very handy technique to have because uh, iMovie's built-in tools couldn't give you a graphic look like this. I've got one more expert tip to share with you. Now, if you're outputting this project at 720p, remember that all the clips we downloaded are at 1080, which is about 30% larger. iMovie auto-scales video that you bring in to make it all conform to the project size, the project's output size. But this means we've got these 1080 clips. We've got about 30% of wiggle room uh, before we lose any resolution. That means we could animate a zoom in or zoom in a little bit and move left to right, recompose the shot. Let me show you how to do that. First, let's get this, uh, this green screen footage out of the way. We're going to use that uh, studio backdrop because it's a static shot. We're going to add a, a small small zoom to it. So click on it once and you get the little wrench icon to get the cropping and rotation tool. Then in the upper left, click the Ken Burns effect, which you often see used, uh, you know, to animate still photos. Now we just resize our start window. We want to, well, you know, we want to zoom in. So let's switch the positions of the start and end windows and um, then click done in the upper right hand corner and voila. We have a camera move that we've added to the previously static shot, and we don't lose any quality because we don't go more than 30% into the image. And now just go to the Share menu and export your movie in any of a bunch of different formats, and you're done. Those are just a couple of my favorite tips on getting started with video blocks and iMovie. Now let's wrap it up. We've walked through the first steps you'll need to get started using video blocks. 
In a future video, we might take a detailed look at how I created this crazy clip using only video blocks content. But for now, what's important to remember from this video is how easy and, you know, kind of fun it is to browse on videoblocks.com using the built in media browser. Uh, you also learned about the choices that you have as far as file formats when you're downloading. When you're editing an iMovie, you'll find that you can import pretty much any file format that you find on videoblocks.com. When it's time to export your finished video, it'll look extra pro thanks to all of the media you downloaded from Videoblocks. Now that you've seen how easy it is to get Videoblocks footage and music into your project, here's the fun part. Just keep exploring the vast collections at videoblocks.com. You can find the perfect piece to finish a project you're working on now, or get inspired when you're starting something new. Try searching for macro, slow motion, or time lapse next time you're looking for something really unique to add to your next video masterpiece. And also, don't forget to check out content.videoblocks.com for more ideas on how to get creative with video blocks. My name is Bahush. Thanks for watching.